I'm J.K. Maisie, head coach and founder of Elevated Recovery and the Porn Reboot System. Today we're going to talk a little bit about feelings and your porn addiction. And I'm going to be giving you a new perspective or a reframe, so to speak, about feelings and emotions. I think you might find this quite helpful. Feelings are the result of how you interpret events and circumstances in your life. Again, they are the result of how you interpret events and circumstances in your life. So if something happened to you many years ago, maybe while you were a child, while you were a teenager or a young man, and you interpreted it a certain way, the emotions that came up are, in most cases, going to be associated with that event or circumstance. An example would be if you are in some consulting sort of job. So let's say you are an accountant with your own private practice or you're a doctor or you are an attorney. And in the past, many years ago, you had a heavy client load. You really couldn't handle all those clients. And unfortunately, you ended up not performing your best on certain tasks that they had hired you to complete. As a result of that, you know, they called you and they canceled their retainers. They stopped paying fees. Maybe they left you some bad reviews. And so a certain emotion became associated with that event or circumstance which took place. Now, let's say recently you also find yourself running into something similar. Except this time, nothing has really gone wrong. You just see certain signs that are similar to what happened with your previous clients. Maybe a current client complains that you're taking a little bit too long to complete some task. And what happens is you immediately find yourself interpreting it as, you know what, I'm, I'm going to lose my clients. Like, I'm, I'm going to lose my clients because I'm back there again. It is obvious I, I have way too many clients. I cannot support them and this is it as a result this may lead to a feeling of stress or the feeling of frustration on the other hand you could interpret this situation as something different you could interpret it as a sign that you have a heavy client load and as a result you're not really delivering to your clients the level of expertise that you promise when you advertise your services and as a result, you're able to let some of your clients go from their contract and actually focus on building up your reputation, providing a great service, getting those wonderful five-star reviews and referrals from clients who are satisfied with what you have provided for them. In reality, though, as somebody who works with a lot of high-performing businessmen, executives and entrepreneurs, I found that that's unlikely to be the case. Most professionals regardless of being overloaded, once they've gotten paid, once their pride and their ego and their reputation is in it, really believe that, you know, I'm going to be able to deliver. This is what it takes. I need to hustle. This is the price I need to pay and often end up feeling that stress and frustration and in some cases losing those clients. But that's neither here nor there. My point is there's a different way to interpret it. If you interpreted it in a different way, you would no longer feel stress. We're not talking about money. We're not talking about the reputation of your firm. We're talking about your feelings, your emotions, the very things which are directly leading to your out of control behavior. You are medicating these feelings with them. Therefore, your interpretation of certain events and situations is critical. Some people talk about the feeling first, like, yeah, that's wonderful. You have this feeling, but it's also important at a certain point to start looking deeply at how you interpret it. Now, within the porn reboot system, both in the implementation program and the intensive program, you have the opportunity to work with a neural reprogramming specialist. And his job is basically not to work with you on your addiction to pornography, but to work with you on your limiting beliefs, as well as the interpretation of certain feelings, feelings which you may not even be able to identify yet. You just act on them on autopilot. So if you interpret something as 
any situation as being beneficial to you, regardless of how horrible the situation seems to everybody else or on the surface, in general, you're going to feel good about yourself. You're going to feel happy. That's actually the reality of the way the world works. It's a reality that we don't want to accept because we attach to different things. I also want to take a moment to mention that even negative interpretations can turn out to be a positive thing. An example is you might decide that, you know what, I want to quit my job and I want to start this business. And you've absolutely convinced yourself that that is the right decision to make. And you're ready to do this. You're about to just jump off the cliff and do this big thing. And then you end up finding out that you don't have enough capital to actually start that business that you don't truly understand the business the way you thought, that you haven't done enough marketing research, or you suddenly realize, actually, I don't know how to do marketing research, and everything was just based on all these very, very strong emotions. And the emotion that comes up after that, so first of all, you had a very, very positive emotion. You were excited about this. But then another emotion comes up, anger and disappointment. First of all, disappointment. You're just disappointed that you're not going to be able to do this and you had revved yourself up so much to be your own boss, to quit the nine to five, to, to generate wealth, to be independent, to buy back your time, whatever you want to call it. You're disappointed and then anger comes up. But there could be a positive aspect to it. The positive aspect is because of this negative emotion, this negative feeling that has come up, you are now able to take the accurate interpretation of that more seriously. The accurate interpretation is that you were not ready to take that risk. You might have been throwing away your financial future or putting yourself in a rough situation, but there was a positive emotion that was leading you to do this. All the positive emotions of the things you would gain and the way you would feel when you actually quit your job and started your own business. And so that is one of the ways that actually negative feelings can lead to a more accurate interpretation, which is sometimes good for you in many cases. Because on the other hand, if you decided that you were going to feel good and excited about this, you know what you would have done? You would have gone ahead and made the decision irrationally. You know, you've probably had that friend who called you up asking you about what you thought about this decision they were going to make, a big decision in your head, all you could see was that this was going to lead to pain and frustration in this person's life. But they were so enthusiastic, you knew that they were just calling you for you to approve the decision that they were making. And because of that, they blocked themselves off from accurate interpretation of what could happen or what is actually happening. I hope that makes sense, gentlemen. Now, what does this have to do with our out of control sexual behavior or porn addiction. Well, there are two feelings that are very important when it comes to porn addiction. The first is this strong desire, the urges that you have to view pornography, the urges that you have to masturbate compulsively or experience an orgasm. And then the second feeling is this feeling that sometimes follows it, which is this feeling of absolute powerlessness. Now, here's the interesting thing. If you were to interpret your urges your very strong urges as something which was normal for you, not something you had to accept, just something that was normal for you because you are a man who at this point in your life is dealing with a compulsive behavior. You're like, yeah, I do have a problem with pornography. Yes, it's going to take a while to develop the habits, the lifestyle and the self image to overcome it. So no, it's not unusual that I would experience strong urges once in a while or often if you were to see it as, okay, cool, this is an opportunity for me to start working on my reboot. This is an opportunity to understand what is the emotion I'm medicating. Is it loneliness? Is it some unresolved issue? What's going on? If you viewed it as normal, then you actually have the ability to change it because it's what's happening right now. There is the capacity to change that which you have accepted not only accepted, you actually see it as a beneficial thing because you're going to learn about yourself. On the other hand, if the feeling that comes up is a feeling of powerlessness, then you are going to interpret all these strong emotions as an addiction. 
as something that is absolutely uncontrollable. Oh, I have no control over this. The urge has come again. What can I do about these urges? They are so powerful, no matter how hard I try. There's nothing I can do about it. I wish I wasn't dealing with these urges again. Your feelings are a result of how you interpret events and circumstances which occur to you, which happen to you. An event or circumstance has occurred. You have experienced a very strong urge. Your feeling, your interpretation is, I am powerless. I cannot control this. And therefore, what follows is addiction. It is the belief that you have absolutely no control, but even more dangerous. And when I say addiction, I mean traditional definitions of addiction where you have to do things, you know, step by step, taking it one day at a time, being absolutely powerless. Are you seeing what I'm getting at? At difference between traditional methodologies and some other methodologies of dealing with this. So it now becomes this uncontrollable thing. So within the porn reboot system, if a man comes in with this sort of belief, we call him a trial rebooter. So there's a trial rebooter and there's a true rebooter. A true rebooter, he's like, yeah, it's normal for me to have this. I'm not going to live with it forever, but right now I know I'm going through the process and the urges will change. But yeah, it's not a big deal if I have a strong urge. It has happened. I know it's going to happen and I'm here to end it. On the other hand, a trial rebooter is not ready for that. A trial rebooter experiences that and goes like, oh my God, I'm an addict. There's nothing I can do about it. The urge has come again. I just don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm an addict. I guess that's it. And everything that follows, every other emotion is a negative emotion. You just create this cycle for yourself and it becomes very difficult for you to end your out of control behavior. And that is one of my reservations, one of the reservations that I personally had early in my reboot when I was trying to end my out of control behavior and I looked at various therapeutic methods and I looked at 12 step groups and SAA and just the concept of powerlessness just rubbed me the wrong way because thankfully earlier in my life I understood the power of feelings. I understood the power of interpreting events. And again, we have unfortunately had addiction to be something that has been classified traditionally in religion and many things as this thing which is almost impossible to overcome, as this thing that we must be a victim to. Like, oh, he's an addict, he's addicted, he is a victim. There are moments within that, my brother, where you have choices. And a true rebooter, come to the porn reboot system, you will meet them. A true rebooter is a man who, yes, he understands he has a compulsive behavior, but he's no victim. He just accepts where he is at. And because of that, there is a possibility for change. There's more of a possibility for change because the emotions that come up are positive. Do you believe that it is possible to go through the rebooting process and for the most part, be positive and excited about it? I invite you to find out. Whenever you're ready, there are a couple of links below this video, not in the comment section, in the description below this video, where you can speak to one of my team members to find out a little bit more about our programs, to find out if you are a good fit. If you're not a good fit, it's not a big deal. At the very least, they're gonna point you in the right direction. And if you're not ready to speak to somebody about it, I highly recommend that you join our private and confidential Facebook group, the Porn Reboot Group, to learn more about our unique system for ending your out of control behavior within 90 days. Thank you for watching.